Hello there. My name is Rusty Beasley, and I am the owner of the Children of Sophista imprint and author of the Children of Sophista book series. The Children of Sophista book series is a blend of science fiction and contemporary fantasy with an emphasis on realism. Here I am holding the illustrated hardcover POD or print on demand version of the fifth book in the series. While this is the fifth book in the series, it is meant to be read either as a standalone novel or as the latest installment in the series. My Kickstarter project is to improve the quality of the novel through a second professional edit and bring the book to bookstores nationwide. Before I explain how I plan to do that and what makes the novel so special, I must know, are you a child of Sophista? If you are, then travel through time with me from book number one to the future book number five. Modified by aliens to be evolved beings, two teens, an artistic prodigy and the life sciences genius, want to live a secluded life and raise a family, but they must pass alien trials and learn to be the secret king and queen of contemporary earth, or they will be executed.
dreams are alternative timelines. A young teen boy is the genius son of physically abusive parents, for he is the master of time. A teen couple, modified by aliens, rules humanity with tragic results, for they are the most promising prodigies of the world. Will love lead to a convergence of the timelines or to oblivion? Will the children of Sophista keep their love of life or drown in the cynicism and despair of humanity? Through all the adversity, will the children and their alien friends remain bonded as one large family? Perhaps they will, but to understand the children of Sophista, we must first understand where they come from. Fifth grader Tycho's genes come from an ancient race of sapient lizards who wanted Tycho to be the supreme predator of carbon-based life forms. It was their way to get revenge on all other alien races. The Sophistans, pure energy beings, have the most benevolent attitude, hoping to evolve humans into an advanced peaceful race, living in servitude to the whims of Sophista. The Seychelles, small winged human looking creatures, have instilled humans with some of their genes. Humanity perceives these hybrids to be normal people who are members of the greatly respected humanitarian organization called the Fairies. The Seychelles want the Earth for their own kind and to have total control of the remaining humans. At this moment in time, the mix of genes implanted by various alien races have evolved to the point where immortal children of extreme intelligence are being born, imbued with telepathy and the power to teleport short distances. They have many other powers, but a catastrophe in time rips them from their supernatural lives, dropping them into a terrifying reality, a reality which crushes their dreams of utopia. Vulnerable, they now fear that humans will dissect them to see how their remaining powers work. Novels of this sort usually focus on how smart the genius children are and how cool their superpowers are. I take a completely different approach, showing their children's point of view, how they feel about the world, what they fear about the world, and their struggles to cope with it. To some extent, the novel gives a voice and comfort to the intelligent children of the real world, some of whom face difficulty in adapting to mainstream society. Cyan in the Owl from Oblivion copes with alcoholic parents and their brutal assaults driven by their hunter instincts. The more he reads in the library about mankind's brutal history, the more he feels out of place, like he didn't belong in this world. And yet he is here, and he doesn't fully understand why. The heart and struggle of these magical kids cannot be captured in the simple book blurb of an online description. This rich and very detailed world must be thumbed through for a prospective reader to connect with it. Selling a few books in a local bookstore will not allow the creation of these novels to continue, nor spread the word to the select few who will treasure them. They must be displayed nationwide in bookstores of all kinds, both small and large. The bookstores will only accept books offered on the same terms that large publishers give. This means that they want almost half the book's price as their profit. They want to order the books at the push of a button on their store's terminal with a book shipped for free to their store, receiving a 90-day loan on them. They want to be able to return unsold books for free, and they want the books to magically appear in their inventory system. To satisfy their requirements, I must spend thousands of dollars becoming part of a web of software and networking that runs the publishing industry. The book itself must be cheap as dirt to manufacture so that there is enough profit to pay the bookstore's large profit and the large shipping and handling expenses. The Owl from Oblivion is not a cheap book to make. With over 640 pages containing over 27 illustrations and colored text designating telepathic conversations, it must be printed using a full color process and bound with a strong, durable hardcover binding. To make this large, full color book cheap enough, I must print at least 3,000 books in one long print run on a press in Shenzhen, China. 
Unlike the US POD printing process, this press in China will stamp the book using heavy printing press ink onto fine glossy paper that is twice as heavy as the POD paper. When printed this way, the illustrations are stunning and the print is disc dense and crisp. The binding of the book is sewn and glued to cloth with such quality that it makes POD bindings look like they were done in someone's garage. Including shipping from China, the manufacturing cost per book is about one-third that of the POD printing alone. Please help me reach my goal so that these books will be able to inspire both teens and adults nationwide. I hope you will consider my 4,000 book stretch goal, which will actually generate a profit to support development of future books. The second stretch goal will allow me to acquire a pressure-sensitive, high-definition graphics display drawing tablet, which will enable me to raise the quality of my illustrations. I have closely worked with professional editors on my books. Part of this Kickstarter will pay for a second pass of professional editing for the album of living. My editors are selected from a pool of editors with an average of 10 years of publishing industry experience. I have already paid over $3,000 out of my own pocket for the first editing pass. In short, book number five, The Owl of Oblivion, is a culmination of six and a half years of work on my part, writing and learning the illustrated book publishing trade. I have spent over $50,000 out of my pocket bringing this series to fruition. I will still put five to $10,000 of my own money at risk in this next phase, so you will know that I'm serious about making this successful. With your support, I will bring the story of these exceptional children, their struggles in the real world, and their uncrushable optimism for the future to large numbers of people. Thank you for funding my Kickstarter. Be sure to check out the rewards in the text below. For avid supporters, there is a contribution level which will allow you to receive a signed copy of the Owl from Oblivion before the bookstores even do, or for your name as a large contributor to be printed on a page in the book. Hi there. Um, if you're not totally exhausted by that uh, rather long video, um, I just thought I'd come by and say hello and uh, tell you I'm not a robot in the video, that it really is me and I really did write those books and it took about six and a half years of my life to do that. And it was rather intense actually, six and a half years. Uh, one of the things that the video really doesn't convey is how detailed and how philosophical the books are. Um, it's rather, I don't know, I guess it's got more of an impact because the kids in the book are really uh, sort of their little childish quotes are actually uh, some pretty deep philosophical thoughts. Uh, this kind of book really caters to some people but not all people and so uh, it is kind of a niche and that's why I want to really try and push this book and sell it in a lot of bookstores so that they um, so the people have a chance to find it really. Um, I thought I would sit here and read this poem that I wrote about the whole book series. It's kind of insightful, kind of gives you a, a dream to kind of hold in your head and sort of encourage you on every day when you wake up. It's called, uh, If I Could Dream. If I could dream, I would dream of a land filled with perpetual childhood and fairies, where knowledge was a touch screen away and dreams materialized into reality. Energy would be plentiful and power even me, with a motherly computer putting me to bed at night, filling my mind with imagery. New friends would be a button push away, filled with vines that care. The machine that would make them would pop them out, filled with dreams to share. We would talk of knowledge and places to explore, while staring at the stars of night. A single thought would send us there admiring new forms of life. If I could dream, I would fall asleep and dream even more. But if people discovered my secret dreams, they would know I was a child of Sophista. I hope you will give generously so that the dreams like this poem talks about will be preserved for the future and not fade away.
thanks for listening to me.